It's time when we see pattern cycles and all those things clicking on. It's time that we say, wait, this thing, oh, I notice it in my grandfather. I notice it in my father. I'm noticing it in my house. This thing, I'm noticing it from this place, this place, this cousin came. He didn't marry. This one came, he didn't marry. This one, he didn't marry. What happened? He just had children and disappeared from the house. And you don't know. You are not, you are not questioning. What is, what, is, what is happening? There's an issue. There's a problem here. Why is it that people, my, my, my people from my family, they don't marry before they, I mean, before they give birth? There's, all of them are giving birth outside. If they don't give birth outside, there's nothing like marriage for them. It is time that you, your own generation, you rise and say, enough is enough. This cause, I've drawn the line. It will not pass my generation. It's time we rise up for this next generation. Because if we continue, it will just keep causes. Then we continue if you don't rise up. In deliverance. So we are, we are looking at what are the root causes? What are the root causes? Of course, there are things that bring about curses. What are the root causes of inherited family causes? Because this was the direction it took me. You see, inherited family causes. What are the root causes of inherited family causes? The first one, he said, idol worship. Idol worship. The sin of idol worship. Concerning this God, explicitly wants, wants us in Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So we are not supposed to have any other God apart from God, apart from the Lord Jesus. We are not to worship or serve idols. Sometimes you come into a Christian community, you still see women going to visit some certain places. I know even here there are some that still once in a while stroll into such places to consult, he said, idol worship is a no-no. It does not matter if you are even ignorant of the consequences of your actions or not. A curse will come upon you just because you are visiting such places. A curse can come upon you. When God says something, he means it and does it. He keeps his word. When he says, this curse will come upon you because of idol worshiping, to your fourth generation. That's how far just worshiping an idol can take a course in your family, to the fourth generation. He says, every time, actually, you visit a fetish priest or a star reader, someone that can read star, you bring your child to say, I want you to check the star of my daughter or the star I want to see. I want you to check the star. Or you visit astrologers or participate in false religion. You are bringing curses on your lives and the lives of your children. We are talking of recovering the next generation. So we need to stop this. If we keep visiting idol centers, worship um, shrines, we keep implicating the next generation into what we have already suffering. And those curses will pass from one generation for 400 years. Just idol worship is written here. The curse would attract poverty. It attracts poverty. You'll be wondering, ah, this poverty, where is it coming from? This idol worship, I'm telling you, is not, it might not even be you who went there. But your father was a priest of a shrine. You, you gave your life to Christ. And you didn't know that something like deliverance has to come upon you. You need to go through deliverance. This cause will still be following you. So you don't just say, oh, I'm a new creation in Christ. You just say it and move. This thing happened, something like this happened to one young man, very young, promising fine man like that. And I remember my husband called him one day and said, I see a curse on your head. Oh. It's like there's a curse. He said, you need to pay attention to this thing. Well, you know what? And at that time, he was going for service. So my husband said, find time to come. Let us pray about this thing that I'm seeing. This guy went for service. He went up. It was just... He forget, he, he, I don't know if he forgot, he didn't feel, you know, there are some people who tell them you have cause on your head, you say, ah, me, God forbid, Allah, I don't have a cause, it's you that have cause. 
Oh, they don't know. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for joke. Go to God in prayer. Lord, reveal. <laughs> Someone said this, so it's not like I'm believing all heart, but just in case something is somewhere, Lord, is there anything like this on my head? He didn't care. He felt I'm a new creation, right? This, 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 all this. He was a very great worshiper. And then he went. He didn't come. He didn't come back. He now said, the next, thing I, the next time my son was trying to do his album and all this, all these things, my husband said, I told you something. He said, I'll come, I'll come. He never came. And there was actually a curse on him. This guy, immediately he finished service. He was going for administration somewhere. He died on the road. He died on the road. So some of us, we are believers, or we don't know that something is hindering us. There's a hindrance. We need to look at these things. If we are talking about revival, talking of you know, power and all this, then you need that deliverance from those, all those um, familiar things, familiar spirits, inherited curses, because there are curses that are being inherited in families from, from generation to generation. So, and it, it also doesn't matter if your father, who is an idol worshiper, gave his life to Christ. Hmm? Listen, oh, gave his life to Christ and became born again like two days before his death. And some of you be like, oh, thank you. Baba gave his life to Christ just before he died. What happened to all his, his images, his idols that are all there? What happens to them? You think they will sit down and be looking at you, oh, Baba has died, nobody will worship him. Oh, those things have covenants. Sometimes you don't even know they have covenanted you from the fourth, to the fourth generation. They've already given you to them. Then you say, oh, thank God, oh, Baba died in Christ. Yes, he died in Christ, but he left you with problem. And then you need to begin to ask the Lord for help. At that point, if he did that, then you need to call for a family deliverance from the idols and the altar that he has erected because altars have life inside of them. They are spirits that control altars. Spirits, they don't die. So if Baba died, it doesn't mean that that spirit died. No, that spirit is looking for another expression. Spirits don't like being in the wilderness. They don't like being in dry places. They like very comfortable, comfortable places, like your heart and my heart that have been cleaned. Those are the kind of places they love to occupy. So it is not just enough that Baba gave his life to Christ. The course we keep rolling down the line unless it is purposely, it is purposely broken. It will keep rolling down. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So these things are not flesh and blood, though. They're not human beings that you can see. He said, but against principalities. These things are principalities. Against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, these idol worshippers, they are not children of God. That's just the truth. So let's not deceive ourselves. They're not children of God. And they are clearly in league with these same forces that God said we are fighting against. These same forces. Such people are in league with this. Now, going through, having gone through um, idol worship, I have another one. Demonic names. A lot of Christians, they don't even know <laughs> the meaning of their names. If you go, in case you are someone who doesn't know the meaning of your names, one thick local name like this, please go and ask someone than your father. Please, what is the meaning of this name? Probably, maybe it's even the problem of my life that has been, you know, captured in that name. Some family curses, they come from demonic names that these families adopt. Names derived from family idols. You see, it's the idols. Names derived from family idols. And here in Africa, there are people who worship certain rivers. Like in my place, I'm a Yoruba girl. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm a girl now. <laughs> you know, certain rivers, like in my place, we have Oshun, we have Ogun, we have um, Oya, we have Orisha, we have Egun. All these, some of them are attached to people's names. There's Ogundele, <laughs> there's a Shangowawa. There are all kinds of names attached. And these rivers have gods and goddesses ruling them. And they are even worshipped. Then we will go and carry our newborn baby. Uh, mommy, grandma, please give baby a name. And she called it Shagowa. 
You shall go to a city on its own down there. You have adopted it into your child. What's the name? What's the meaning of the name? Don't go and look for one beautiful Oyimbo name. One beautiful name from Brazil. And you won't check the meaning of the name. Check the meaning of names before you give your children. Because you are creating an access door for familiar spirits into their lives. And into your homes. Some believe in family. Some even believe in family, familiar spirits. There are some families like that. Come to the West. Many of you don't know the West. Maybe I don't know if other places are like my place. Come to the West. Some families like that believe in familiar spirits of their family. And they even sing praises in that light. These are spirits that operate within the family. These familiar spirits. They operate within that your family. So it's about time we stop naming our children like father has come back. Mother has returned. Which return from? When mother has died and gone. Where is she returning to? You are calling a spirit of a familiar spirit of that family to come and possess that child. And then you will see that that child is going through things in growing up. He's going through so much battles, struggles. You went and you didn't know you had wonder. In the name of your trying to not forget mommy or not forget grandpa, you give, see, because grandpa died, then I give birth. Then you say, that's believing in reincarnation. We are Christians. We don't believe in reincarnation. Once you are dead, you are. Once you are gone, you are. We remember you by the things. Not inside our children. Please, let's take it serious. Christians, we need to come out of these things. So, you know, it's hiding there subtly and working over time in our lives and our children. We're talking of recovering the next generation. We need to take a change. Make a change. Many of us here are not married. I can see a lot of young ladies. Please, when you marry and have your children, don't name them. Papa has come back. Say one you know. The third one is curses pronounced on the family. Now, this one, it comes from the past, where we used to have a lot of, where families, different families used to fight themselves. They have a lot of quarrels, a lot of land, because of land disputes, or, you know, chieftaincy titles. You will see that this family A and this family B are fighting for this chieftaincy. Then somebody will go and look for a shrine. Please put a curse on this family that has been fighting me, that don't want me to take this land. So you will just see that it curses on that family. You won't even understand. This person will die. This one will die. This one will die. So that nobody will be there to fight for the land anymore. These are the things that are happening right before our very eyes. It's not even a thing. She I wrote in the past. It's happening even now. Yes. It's, these things are true. They are happening even now. So this leads people to actually pronounce curses on families. There was, there's an example I want to give. There was this young very little boy, very beautiful, um, young, fine boy like that. He was like six years. As at the time, I was pregnant for my daughter, Esther. And I was in the village with my mother-in-law. I was staying with her that period. So one of those days, I just heard this young boy crying, crying, crying. The first day it happened, I didn't really pay attention. The second day again, it was, I had to come out. I said, Mama, why is this boy crying? Because I now saw that she was cleaning wounds in his body. They were like round, round wounds everywhere, and they were fresh. None was looking dry. And she would use um, detol or whatever, disinfectant to clean and dress the wound. So you'll be crying, crying. What happened? He said the thing just started like that. I said, how? They've taken him from, from one hospital to another hospital to an, another hospital. They will give blood, oh, ple much blood. It's thing will all drain and dry. Ha! What is redraining your blood like that? Small boy. So I now, I, there was this passion, compassion that came to my heart. I said, Kai, this boy is suffering. Okay, my husband is coming for, at that, okay, at that time I had just given birth. See, my husband is coming for the naming ceremony. I'm going to tell him about this young boy. Maybe something can be done about his case. So I told him over the phone, said, you pray, come. So he actually came. So when he came, he said, give me anointing oil. I gave, he now prayed. Prayed for the boy and prayed on the anointing oil. I gave my um, mother in law said, As you clean the wound, after I finish cleaning you, use this anointing oil to also rub on the mouth of the wound. So I didn't know why. I was like, I didn't say anything at that point. When we went 
enter the inner chamber. I say, I want to learn. What, why did you say you should do this? What happened? If you are not a good um, student, but you will not learn many things. He now said, he, as he prayed, God took him to the past of this boy's family. This boy, his father and mother are dumb and deaf. They actually married themselves dumb and deaf. Yes, so they have children, like four of them. Anytime they give birth to them, they'll take them to their in-laws, please, till they grow to some certain level so that their speech will not be affected before they bring them back. He said, and he also saw that the father of this boy's father, that's his grandfather, had a quarrel with another man over a land dispute or something. And then this man now said, you will see, because he saw it. And this you will see, this is grandfather transcended to. Just look out, you will see. The two of them have died and gone, but the curse is still living. And it came on this boy, so that this boy will die. And he said what he saw was because of the pronouncement of a curse that this man said over this boy, which is uh, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And he said he saw that it was a long straw they were using to draw. The, you know, some of these things, they look absurd. They look abstract, but they are true. <laughs> Mysteries are things you cannot understand. How will somebody use straw? How what does it happen? God forbid. Use straw, and they are loading the blood in drums. So that's why the boy's blood just drains. Anytime they put blood, it will drain. They drain it inside there. So what he said, he said, as they put that anointing oil that he prayed over, that if the witches come to eat again, they cannot eat. And honestly, by the time I traveled and came back, this boy was fine. All the wounds, they started drying up. They started drying up. Imagine if nobody knew, nobody discerned or knew what. This boy would have just died like that. There are many people who have just died like that because they are not aware that curses are trailing them from generation to generation. Abraham, you know, he was a friend of God. Yet, do we realize he was barren? His wife was barren, wasn't it? Well, he was a friend of God. Re well into his old age, she was, you know, she was barren. He was not a sinner. Was he a sinner? This was someone that was always discussing with God, right? He was his friend, so they were always discussing. But Abraham was ignorant of the source of his problem, of that barrenness. He didn't know. He was unaware that he had inherited a curse from his father, Terah. Did you ever think about it? No. You know, he had inherited a curse from his father, Terah, who was an idol worshiper. Is he not there? He was an idol worshiper, and he was barren for at least 35 years before Abraham was born. We never looked at that. Abraham was barren for about 25 years before the child came along, isn't it? Let's look at Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, verse 2. It said, And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times, even Terah, the father of Abraham, father of Nacor, and they served other gods. So he was serving other gods. And what? The curse that God has pronounced on people who serve idols. See, into your fourth generation. This thing was already catching up. It's that curse, it kicked in from Terah. It moved to Abraham. The others too, <laughs> they still had, though, but it started dropping. The intensity of the curse started dropping as the generation passed by. Praise the Lord. So the curse started with Terah and lasted for four generations. Isaac inherited the curse. And also Jacob inherited that curse. Despite Abraham was close to God. His request for a child was not answered immediately, though subsequently God had mercy and what answered him. But that was after how many years? 25 years. Ha. Abraham was barren for 25 years, Isaac for 20 years, Jacob for seven years. You know, so the thing kept dropping. And not only barrenness did he inherit, what did he inherit? The curse of lying. It also jumped to the next generation. And the cause of marital problems. If you read through um, Abraham and all those, you will see what I'm talking about. These are curses. Despite the fact he was close to God. But the thing had moved. It had entered because he did not know the source of his problem. 
He didn't know the source. And that's why when things are happening to us, it's good for us to go to God in prayer. Lord, are you aware of this thing? What is the source of this issue? And I know that if you sincerely implore the Lord, he will speak to you so that you have direction on how to pray about these things and be free from them. Another one is that we usually don't even think anything is in. It's traditional marriage rights. Not many of us want to marry. I see a lot of young people here. In Africa and Nigeria, you do traditional marriage first, right? And you do the rights before the white wedding. So through these diverse causes enter into people's lives, the day of their traditional marriage is where their problem started from. And they are not aware of it. Some of these items that are submitted to, to I don't know, certain people, some of these items, they'll say, bring this, bring this, bring this, bring this. Some of them, because they still serve idols. Some of them, they are eating, and some are taken to the idol, the shrine or the altar of that family. So your representation is in the shrine. Then you now finish, you say, oh, I've done traditional marriage, we are going to white, uh, we are going to church, we just go. That's not it. You need to pray. We are Christians. We need to pray before our traditional marriages. We need to pray concerning the items that we give. Any items you are giving us, say, Lord, I separate myself from anywhere these items will go. I break every covenant that will be made on my behalf. I refuse it. I will not enter into agreement with any familiar spirit, any, any family spirit, or any manipulative spirit. You need to pray. Sometimes we take things. We are so excited that we are getting married, but we don't take our time to pray about the process of our marriage, about the process of our traditional marriages. Some is even on the day of that their wedding, you just notice something is missing. Uh, item has been missing. As well, my I think she said her uh, is it her uh, veil was missing. She didn't see it again. And she never had children. I don't know about now. Maybe God has had mercy and has heard her prayer. But she said from that time she it always no peace. And that, that was what the item that was used. Some of these things represent different things. Some salt, some this, the, all kinds of things we don't. Some is 10 naira. It is 10 naira. I'm going to go and do inside. What are they bargaining? Well, sometimes we don't even know it's our life and our children's life. They are bargaining inside there. You need to pray that at the point of my traditional marriage, Jesus will appear there and take control of the agreements and everything that are said inside. We need to pray about those things. So that covenants will not be enacted on our behalf. And then when we enter into marriage, they are activated and they are running. And we don't know the source of these things. Some are oriki names. This is usually seen in Yoruba um, tradition. I'm talking about Yoruba because I'm Yoruba. You know, so I don't know the one of um, Idoma land and Thieve land and all, but at least I know my own. Some is oriki. There are some they will even ask you, what is your oriki name? These names are connected to familiar spirits. They just give you that name. And then, you know, have you ever seen where the, um, some mari um, maybe some ceremonies are taking place? Then some people come with drum. Bo -bo 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 then they start calling you one kind of name. You know, yourself, you have never heard that name before. They start calling you that name, calling you that name. You two will be dancing and be feeling very happy that they are praising you. They will be calling you that name. They will call your name. Call your father's name. Call your grandfather's name. Call your great-grandfather's name. Call your great-great-great. Up to almost 10 generations, you two are dancing. They are calling the familiar spirits of that family. And as you, as you are dancing and you are happy, you are excited, you are high, that thing takes, gets access and enters and begins to walk. They look so good, though. They look ordinary like there's nothing. But you know Satan, he's very subtle. And he loves to use subtle ways to just enter and take position. Our time is far, far spent. And that one is wombs. Through the baby's umbilical cord. Let me ask you, who carried your baby's umbilical cord? Who buried it? I hope the person who buried your baby's umbilical cord, cord knows God and doesn't worship idols. Because this is an entrance of causes. If that person has a kind of spirit to transfer, they use umbilical cords of babies to transfer. So no matter how I am, 
I know my mother-in-law is a born-again Christian. I know her very well. I say, once this umbilical cord, bah, give it to my mom. They, see the letter? Look at it. Inside. I monitor it. My mother-in-law goes up. I went with her the first time. I told her, do the prayer over the thing. I buried it. The next one, the same thing. I know where all of them are buried. I know what was said. But the one that we are careless, we just leave it to the nurses. We just leave it to people. Some people will even be looking for that. Where is the cord? Where is the cord? And you don't know. <laughs> then your child grows and then there's a connection. Where that cord has started. You know that place is where the mother feeds the baby. There's a transfer from the mother to the baby. That's why they use that umbilical cord to transfer causes and to transfer evil words. They are speaking over that baby. And then things begin to happen. Sometimes late marriages, sometimes no marriage at all, sometimes broken marriages, sometimes things does not work. You are the best in your office, never give you promotion. You are the best, they never pick you. There's something that is just not working for you. You put your hand in this business, no work. Put your hand in this business, ah, somebody pitied you, gave you so much money. You can't account for it. Curses. Once you have identified any of these patterns at work in your life, the next thing is to present yourself for deliverance. I begin to pray deliverance prayers over yourself. Some will go in an instance. Some is gradual because the thing is thick. Especially for those whose their fathers were priests. Do you understand? Some were priests. So they used their first child, maybe their first girl or their first boy for many things. They, and sometimes it's not as if they want to do evil. They feel in their best knowledge is protection. That's what we call it. Protection. But at the end of the day, there's no how devil will protect you. No. He will, all, he will give you as if he's giving you something with, with one hand, and the other hand, he's taking ten out of you. So, let's look at it. What's the process of deliverance from these curses? Let's look at Galatians chapter 3 quickly. Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 13. It says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse himself for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So I'm just saying, ah, uh, we, in case some people's heart here is already beating doom, 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 because they are, <laughs> some people are raising their hands already. Like, hey, I didn't know that I was entangled in this and that and that. He said, he was made a curse for us. He hanged on the tree. So as long as you believe in Jesus, at least that is a step that you believe in Jesus. He was made a curse on our behalf. You must be born again. This is process of deliverance. You cannot be delivered if you are not born again. Not the kind of born again that, you know, these days we even have to define the born again. That I'm a born again again. I'm a born again times three. I'm a born again times four. But in those days, if you say born again, they really, really mean born again. But so much falsehood has entered into the church that we need to use spiritual eyes to be sure that this person that is saying like this is truly who he says he is. He's giving what your life to Christ, being born again. And you need to check your salvation status. You know, the other time I was talking of idols. You know, the first one I talked about idols. There was this young lady. She wanted to get married. It was quite difficult for her. In fact, she was almost cut off. But somehow, somehow, we started praying and deliverance came to her right in time. Her parents used to worship water spirits. And they had the altar at their backyard. And every time the parents used to, you know. But they were born again, right? So they, they were not joining them to worship this water spirit. But do you know that this thing was still working in their lives against them? Because it, it was active and they had not broken it. They had not been delivered from it. So when marriage came... The first girl wanted to marry. She had already almost getting there. The man just died. Bah. Yes. The man just died. The second girl wanted to get married. They struck her with sickness. Bah. Ah, ah. But thank God, this, this lady was close to us. So we now realized. Ah, okay, come. My husband was now around. We prayed. We did everything. And suddenly she revived. And then she got married. When she got married, I told her, I said, as you get married though, don't just cut away. Still, um, Make contact, or, because some of these things, they don't just disappear completely. Now she wasn't making contact, nothing. 
by the time she wanted, she was pregnant, everything was moving well. Somewhere six, seven months, she started seeing things appearing. She said, house, go with the pastor and pray. And that's how we prayed and prayed and prayed, cancel many things, covenants and all that and all that, and deliver, and she was delivered. And that's how she gave birth. And she has, she has even given birth to more than one, two. Have they told you you cannot marry? Have they told you you have spirit husband, spirit wife, whatever, whatever it is? What is it that they have told you? What is it that is in your foundation that you feel is limiting you? The blood of Jesus can set you free today. And deliverance is sure this night in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we just appreciate the name of Jesus? Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Look inward and begin to pray. If you are in this meeting, there's a reason why God has brought you. He wants to bring deliverance to you. Maybe you don't even know that there's a curse that is, that is just staring around you that has been moving and moving, making you move in circles and cycles. What is that thing? What is that thing? Shabba, ba, 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 ba. Shada, da, ba, da, ba, shada.